Hello, my dear educators. This is Minakshi Narula, founder and CEO at Mentoring the Mentors, an institute that accelerates your learning curve. My lovely educator, let's talk about pre-service teacher education. We will discuss concept, nature, objectives, and scope of pre-service teacher education. Yes, what will courses we pursue before we actually take up teaching in the real classrooms as teachers, before we enter the teaching as a profession, so my lovely educators, different courses we pursue, like be at Bachelors of Education, Masters of Education. We go ahead with the Diploma in Education, NTT, PTT, right? Be uh, PP at Bachelor of Physical Education, Master of Physical Education, a number of other courses are there that we pursue before we actually enter teaching as a profession, right? So my lovely educators, we will talk about these uh, four topics, concept, nature, objectives, and scope. I mean, these are the subtopics that we'll talk about. So, you know very well as per new education policy 2020, new education system we have got, where we have got five plus three plus three plus four stages are there. So, we shall discuss about secondary stage, especially the four years program, nine to 12 classes, right? And the children, probably 14 to 18 years of age are there who are there in the classes from 9th to 12th. So my lovely educators, because these children in the secondary classes, they actually uh, reach almost the maturity level. They're in the adolescent stage. The psychosocial makeup of the students, the curriculum requirements, it demands separate teacher education programs for all the stages, right? All the stages, I mean, teachers, they are required special kind of training, foundational, preparatory, middle, and secondary. But especially for this grade, we will be discussing this stage, secondary stage, right? So here you go, my lovely educators. If we talk about the concept of the new academic structures, this senior stage, teacher requirement, pre-service teacher training, that is there. So education and training that is being provided to the student teachers before undertaking teaching actually in the real classrooms, that is pre-service teacher education. That is meant for student teachers, right? And it's a period of guided and supervised learning. We go ahead with the teaching learning process under supervision, under supervision, under guidance of our mentors, of the facilitators. We do observe also other student teachers teaching practices too, right? You see, pre-service training, it begins at the observer and we complete the same as professionals, right? We enter the profession as experts, right? We begin the same as observers, right? So with experience and time, the student teachers, they get command over teaching strategies and classroom management, you know very well, as we actually enter the teaching learning practice, classes we start taking then only we get to know about various classroom management strategies because we enter the schools we enter the classrooms and each and every school has a unique setup right children coming from different backgrounds they have got different issues behavioral classroom management take different learning styles and slowly and gradually we get to know about different strategies right uh, to manage the classes to bring innovation in our teaching learning style so this is a concept of uh, pre-service teacher education so unesco talks about pre-service teacher education like any kind of uh, recognized and organized private and public educational programs designed to train the future teachers. We are, uh, we are student teachers. Obviously, we are the future teachers. We will be taking up teaching as a profession. That's why we pursue these kinds of courses, be it M at DL at NTT, etc. So my lovely educators, these courses, when we pursue from recognized universities, institutions, organizations, and they are in an organized manner because we have got a proper curriculum, proper syllabus that we follow. And accordingly, you see at different levels, we pursue different degrees, different diplomas, different courses as per the needs of the learners that we will be dealing with, right? So this is what has been shared by UNESCO, like uh, pre-service teacher training, it doesn't cover the teachers who do not meet the officially recognized training standards. We have to be certified. We have to get certified uh, courses done if we want to enter this teaching profession, if we want to take up teaching as a profession, right? So this is explained by UNESCO and now NCTE. 
It talks about a program of education, research and training of persons to teach from pre-primary to higher education level. So if you talk about the structure, it starts from foundational stage, then preparatory, middle, secondary. This is our latest model, right? So we pursue different courses to cater to the needs of the different learners at different age groups. Goods Dictionary talks about all the formal, non-formal activities, experiences that help to qualify a person to assume responsibilities of a member of the educational profession or discharge his responsibility, his or her responsibilities more effectively, right? So you can make changes in that. You see, this is the uh, definition that I have taken from Goods Dictionary. You know very well, everywhere, uh, the terminology that is being used, that is male dominant, he, his, man. So we have to change this terminology, these words, like uh, we have to use gender neutral terms, okay, to discharge one's responsibilities more effectively, you can write like that. So you see, during uh, this B ed program, M ed program, because I'm talking about that, so I will talk about again and again, these programs only, because I will be covering this curriculum that is there, In uh, you will be studying under these programs. So formal and non-formal activities are there, different experiences are there, like we study in the classroom also, we study various subjects, psychology, uh, philosophy, school organization, uh, we take up special teaching subjects also, special education too, we talk about gender education and different uh, subjects we pursue, like that is a formal transaction of uh, syllabi that is going on in the classroom. And apart from this non-formal activities, we go ahead with the teaching, learning, model teaching also, we observe others' lessons also, we discuss also, right so accordingly micro teaching uh, lessons are also going on so we learn about teaching learning process through various activities some are formal some are informal also right so that together constitute a training for the teachers right so my lovely educators we as uh, we'll be talking about nature scope meaning and objectives we have already discussed about the concept of teacher education, pre-service teacher education. Let us now discuss about the nature of pre-service teacher training. So nature me kya kya cheeze aati hai ki nature kaisa hai, right? Hum general terms pe bhi baat karte hai, nature kaisa hai, koi flexible hai, koi rigid hai, koi strict hai, kaisa hai. So is pre-service teacher training ka jo nature hai, wo kaisa hai? Isme kya kya cheeze hum cover karenge nature mein? Ke, uh, I mean, organized hai, ke unorganized hai, kitne syllabus ko, kitne curriculum ko, kitne courses ko ye cover karta hai, uh, ek stage ke baad ye ruk jata hai, ya wo continuous hai, I mean, is tarikhe ke points jo hai, wo isme discuss karenge. See, there are a few points on the screen, we'll talk about all those points. It is based on theories, principles and research. Aisa nahi hai ki kuch bhi vague hai, something like that. Based on various theories given by educationalists. Different principles they have been given to us related to education, related to pedagogy, right? Related to learning styles. You know very well we talk about Bloom's taxonomy. We talk about multiple intelligences. There are a number of theories that have been given to us. So it is research based pre service teacher training, right? Because we keep on making changes into it, right? So based on the research, based on the needs uh, of the learners. It has various aims and objectives. I have already discussed about aims and objectives in my previous video. I'll be sharing the link in the description box below. Please go through that also. Means pre-service teacher training, it has various aims and objectives and it is organized and sequential. Nothing is unorganized. It is properly organized. Like I have already talked about, like if you have to teach children, you have to go ahead with the foundational classes. You have to pursue the courses like NTT. Then uh, again, uh, for the preparatory stage, you have to go with the PTT, primary teachers training. And the other courses that are that are there, we need to pursue those kinds of courses, right? So this is properly organized. And it's sequential too, because you see, semester-wise, maybe uh, there are annual programs. Uh, every year, we need to go ahead with the different courses step-by-step. Step. Like, for example, we study with educational research, right? And then slowly and gradually go ahead with advanced educational research. So step-by-step, step, we keep on moving ahead. That is sequential, that is organized, well-defined, and it's broad and comprehensive too. It's not narrow. Like it is not only limited to a particular subject. For example, if I am uh, pursuing B.Ed. suppose uh, as uh, 
uh, science teacher. So I will not only be talking about teaching of physical sciences, teaching of biological sciences. I will be learning about philosophy. I need to learn about psychology. I need to learn about school organization. I need to learn about arts integration. I need to learn about ICT and digital tools. So it is really very broad because I have to cater to the needs of the learner. So I need to study about different topics that are there. It is very, very broad and comprehensive. Different subjects they have been covered under this right so because i need to cater to uh, need to cater to the holistic development of the learner so i first of all have to think about my holistic development as a teacher right so teacher you see there are there's physical education also when we take up be ed because we need to talk about health and physical education work education programs are there general studies are there so we need to cater to these uh, needs of the learners so then it is uh, it follows interdisciplinary approach. It is not focused on one particular subject. It's not narrow. We have already discussed about it, right? So it uh, talks about the interdisciplinary approach. Got it? So like, for example, we integrate various disciplines. We are uh, talking, we are talking about English or maybe languages integration with uh, sciences, language integration with social sciences, sciences and social sciences integration, arts integration with all music integration is what with all we talk about all those things. So that is interdisciplinary in nature. It's dynamic. It's flexible. It keeps on changing as per the needs of the learners, as per the changes in the society, as per the various outcomes that we receive from the research right and it is continuous in nature it's not like that after completing maybe one year program diploma or maybe two year degree program you think like it's over now you don't have to learn for the entire life till you will be uh, taking teaching as a career teaching as a profession no it's not like that my lovely educators we need to continue to learn because you see, uh, children, like like for example, today is learners, 21st century learners. Knowledge is just a click away. So gone are the days when teacher was considered as the embodiment of knowledge and the students, they always look forward to the teachers if they wanted to have any kind of knowledge. Now their knowledge is everywhere, everywhere. Now we have to uh, work as facilitators. Earlier it was teacher-centered education. Now we are uh, fostering a uh, learner-centered education in our classes. Competency-based education is there. So it is dynamic in nature. It is continuous and it caters to the needs of the learners for the age of the different learners. We pursue different courses, right? It is not same. Like, for example, if I have to teach the kindergarten children, that's the foundational stage, like whatever I'll be learning, if I'll be trained, these are senior school, uh, school children, senior state children. So I won't be able to understand the problems that I have to face in the classes when I will be teaching the junior children, when I'll be teaching the kindergarten stage, when I'll be taking up the foundation or the preparatory stage. So we need to prepare the children accordingly, right? So now let's move ahead. Uh, objectives of pre-service teacher training. What are the objectives? Lakshya kya hai? Uh, pre-service teacher training, okay? To provide teachers with knowledge, skills, and values. Knowledge kis cheez ka? Obviously, curriculum to hum graduation tak padke aate. Course curriculum, like for example, if I have completed my BSc degree, medical stream, non-medical stream, kisi ne graduation kiya hai with humanities or commerce or whatever. Jo humne topics padhe hai, uske upar humara command hai. But how to deliver this same? Subject matter ka delivery kaise kiya jayega? That skills we need to enhance and we also have to talk about different values, right? Values integration with the subject and we also have to inculcate some values in our, us. You know very well, values, they're not taught, they're caught. We just catch the values, we follow them, we imbibe the values through our environments. We have to be the role models for the, of the values so that children, they'll be able to follow us and they'll be able to inculcate those kinds of values in themselves. And is all, uh, what, what else is objective is uh, to know about assessment and evaluation. There are different forms of assessment. We talk about diagnostic assessment that we do in the classes, right? In the beginning, PK testing type. And then we go ahead with the formative assessment that is a continuous process goes on throughout the uh, year, throughout, I mean, if I talk about a one academic year, if I talk about one particular class, that is, that is continuous. And we not, need not to inform the students like you are going to go ahead with the formative assessment and all. And then is summative assessment, the year end assessment, right? So that is also there. And then evaluation procedure, 
that is holistic 360 degree valuation we talk about to know about that also what is 360 degree valuation what all topics what all subjects what all areas are being covered how it is to be done so that is the objective of pre-service teacher training to know about child psychology growth and development to understand various pedagogies of teaching methodologies of teaching various strategies of teaching lesson plan development like what all points are there in a lesson planning, like we talk about learning outcomes, we talk about learning objectives, methodology, like uh, what will a teacher do in a lesson during the transaction of the lesson, what will be the role of the student and how the reflection is to be done, reflection by the student, reflection by the teacher, so different things are there. So we do not get to know during our graduation all those things, we learn about all those things during our pre-service teacher training, right? And we talk about innovative teaching strategies also, because we have got learners coming from different backgrounds with different learning styles. So we need to cater to each and every child's needs, right? For that, we need to come up with innovative ideas. Competency building, that is also required. We are talking about competency-based education. We talk about different competences in our learners. We talk about 21st century skills, critical thinking, communication, collaboration, creativity, innovation, right? Uh, I mean, uh, citizenship. I mean, this global citizenship we are talking about, knowing about different languages, multilingualism, right? Learner-centered education. All these things, they are uh, come under the objectives of pre-service teacher training. And Bloom's taxonomy, obviously moving ahead from remembering to the creation level, step by step, remembering, understanding, and then application, analyzing, evaluation, then coming to the creation level. So we get to know about all those things, how to frame the questions, item writing, multiple choice question, designing a question paper, like all those things, they are there in the pre-service teacher training. You can write all those things. Okay, when we talk about objectives of pre-service teacher training, you know very well, number of things uh, you need to cover over there. And classroom management. Most of the teachers, the student teachers, first of all, they find it challenging to take teaching uh, in a classroom, right? For example, they don't have that much confidence. They are confident about the subject matter, but they're not confident enough to deliver the same in a manner so that each and every child understands the same. To face 35 to 40 students in a classroom coming from different backgrounds, coming with different previous knowledge, right? It, it's very difficult to take up that teaching learning process in the classes, right? So classroom management strategies, behavioral management, that also comes under objectives. Nowadays, the children, uh, they we, we not only um, use the chalk and board in our classes, we go ahead with various ICT tools, various digital tools, right? Uh, TLM, that is teaching learning material, various resources. I mean, we gave a global exposure to our students, collaboration, right? Uh, so that is also required. That is also being studied under the objectives of pre-service teacher training. Knowing about the culture, you see senior uh, secondary stage we are talking about, 9 through 12. So these children, they should also know about the national integration, like uh, you see Desh Bhakti curriculum is there. They should know about patriotism, sustainable development, global goals at the global level, cultural awareness. They should know and they should appreciate the culture of each other. So that's also required. That also comes under objectives of pre-service teacher training. Now coming to the uh, last topic that we'll be discussing today, scope of pre-service teacher training. Scope mein kya aata hai, uska daira kitna hai? Ye uh, courses ko pursue karne ke baad hum kya kar sakte hain? Kya kya kar sakte hain? Sabse pehle to ye aata hai ki hum teaching ja jo course pursue kar rahe hain, Obviously, we will be taking up teaching as a career, teaching as a profession. We'll be going to the classrooms to teach our learners, right? So first of all, developing teaching competencies for various levels. Different, different levels ke liye, different, different courses, diploma and degree courses pursue karte hai. So we become ready for teaching. We become certified for teaching, right? So that is the one thing that we have to do. Obviously, we have to do something for earning bread and butter, right? For teaching, we will be taking up as a profession for that. Apart from this, what else we can do? Generally, I'm thinking, what's going on? Just be an editor, a teacher, bana. that's it. What else can we do? Class mein padha na. Are number of things are there. If you think about, you can go ahead with educational research also, right? You can develop your own theories. You can develop your own principles based on the transaction of teaching learning process going on in the classes based, of your, based on your observation. Different, you can develop different uh, psychological tests also for the children. And, and you will be able to understand the students better. 
you'll be able to understand the society better because the children, they are the future of the nation. They develop our society. You'll be able to understand that better. Accordingly, you can come up with your own theories, own suggestions, own principles, right? And you can become a writer also. I mean, because you will be taking about that, you can become a good author too because you'll be sharing your real life experiences, right? And you will become a responsible members of educational profession and you will become the agents of change. We have to be the agents of change. We can be the agents of change. My lovely educators, we are there only. This is the only profession where we shape the future. In a classroom, 30 to 40 students are there. And we, we teach the students in different, different classes, right? In a school, if there are 1,000 to 1,500 students or whatever, in general, if I talk about, so, so many children, they are there. We as teachers, we facilitate their teaching learning process. We mold them, right? So my lovely educators, so we are the agents of change. Teachers, we are the path finders. We are the torch bearers. Right, we will be leading the path for our learners. We uh, that also enhances, uh, you see, foster self learning also. Self learning for us and for the children as well. We need to explore a lot. We need to need not to limit ourselves to a particular course, a particular book that we will be studying. Right under the course curriculum, we have to go ahead. We have to explore the world, and it also paves the way for analytical study of child psychology. We can bring innovations in pedagogy. See, every day we get to know about different pedagogical strategies and all that we are using in our classes. You can explore my channel too for a number of strategies that we can go ahead. Nowadays, we have been talking about multilingualism, visible thinking routines, arts integration, toy-based pedagogy. So there are a number of innovations are there. You can also bring some kind of different innovation in pedagogy. And we will be able to understand intricacies of profession and we'll be ready to face the challenges. What kind of challenges? Obviously, number of challenges will be there in the classroom when we pursue these kinds of courses and when we take up teaching as a profession in the real life. So my lovely educators, uh, that's all for today. And we will be talking about more such topics for that. Stay tuned, subscribe to my channel and don't forget to give your valuable feedback in the comment section below. You can also explore our website consultforacademics.in if you want to know about more resources and you can download various resources from there. Thank you all of you. Have a nice day from Inakshi Narula at Mentoring the Mentors.